Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. April 17th, 2021. The Milk of Knowledge. A commentary on verse 37 of Surah Baqarah by Sheikh Muhammad Fawzi al karkari May God sanctify his secret. Then Adam received certain words from his Lord, and he relented to him. Truly he is the relenting, the merciful. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Let us return to our master and our father Adam. Then Adam received certain words from his Lord, and he relented to him. If the father received, then the son should receive too. We inherit everything from our forebearers, our nature and temperament as well as our appearance. We share the same physical appearance as Adam, for we inherited his image. We must inherit this reception too, and inherit the knowledge of the names too, for God did not send him for no reason. You might say that God sent him in order to begin the existence of mankind. But if that were all, why would he be mentioned in the Qur'an? The Qur'an would only need to speak of things from the time of our Prophet ﷺ until the end of time, since that is what is relevant to us. But since he is mentioned in the Qur'an, we must have need for him, and we must study what he has to teach us thoroughly. As a human being, you are Adam. Adam is your body, your knowledge of the name of God, your qibla, your words by which you repent to God, from the time when you descended from your mother's womb. Even at that moment you received, you received milk from your mother in order to stop your screams of regret. You received it from her breast, from the sight of the heart. The Prophet ﷺ interpreted milk to symbolize knowledge. Quote, Dear God, bless us in what you have provided us and increase us in it. End of quote. And say, quote, My Lord, increase me in knowledge. End of quote. But if you have never seen milk as knowledge in all your life, then it will remain nothing but milk for you. When the mother nurses her child, she nourishes him with the knowledge of primordial nature, the knowledge of divine oneness, of truly religion in God's sight is submission. She nourishes him with the words of the Lord, the meaning of repentance, that is if she herself has repented. If not, He will inherit from her whatever is in her, be it sin or righteousness. This is why the Prophet ﷺ advised us to choose mothers for our children and to prefer religiosity above all, so that her milk is the milk of religion, not the milk of beauty or lineage or wealth. He also told us to choose names for our children, for your name is a title of a book, the book of your deeds from birth to death. The name is not unimportant. Even for this, the Prophet ﷺ provided us direction, telling us that the best names are those that mean quote, servant of God, end of quote, or those that are related to his own name, Muhammad, Ahmad, and so on. And he advised us to teach them something of the Quran, teach them, not make them memorize, for knowledge is not the same thing as memorization, no matter what we may think. We memorize the Quran like a machine, devoid of any understanding, and so we are marked by the verse. Thus we make it pervade the hearts of the guilty. Teach them the Quran with a proper explanation so that they understand it. 
even if it is only one verse, so that the child becomes a verse of the Qur'an walking upon earth. All of this takes place before you are even born, as your parents consider what to name you. When the righteous mother purifies and cleans herself, says the name of God, and offers her breast to the child, she ought to have conviction that she is feeding him tawheed and love for God and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She should invoke God as she nurses him as our mothers used to. It's sad to see that many mothers today do not do this, or get their milk from the pharmacy in the form of formula which is produced by unbelievers. By the time the child is three years old, he is always playing video games, and you may think that he's a clever boy, which indeed he is, but in darkness. He did not approach the tree. You planted the tree right in him from the beginning, nourishing him on the things displeasing to God. You may say you have no choice, but that is not true. If your wife does not produce milk, then milk from the goat or cows is at least a natural product, which is better than some Masonic concoction that will mess with their brains from the earliest age. When you try to teach them the Qur'an, they resist and do not enjoy it. And if you compel them to do it by fear instead of love, they learn it by rote with no comprehension. Think well on this if you aspire to preach to others and rectify them, but you cannot manage to raise a righteous child. This is true even when it comes to the progeny of Adam. Cain was his firstborn, then Abel, and then others including his heir, Seth. When did the seed of Cain begin to grow? It was when Adam approached the tree. Had Adam never approached it, Cain would not have inherited what he did, and he would have been virtuous. But instead, he inherited a major sin when Adam and Eve approached the tree. The same fate faces you. When you marry, hold fast to the rope of God. Elevate yourself and do not look towards what God forbids. Pray to God to keep you and your wife virtuous so that when you have children, they will grow up righteous. But instead, you go looking for beauty other than the beauty that God has sent you and when you When we ask you about this, you justify yourself by claiming that you are looking for a second wife. You claim that this is your right. But why did God not create four wives for Adam, but only one? The Prophet ﷺ gave us an example for all situations. Perhaps your wife might become infirm so that she is permanently unable to meet your needs. In such a case, he would not deny you the right to look for a second wife to save yourself from error. Or perhaps your libido might be much stronger than that of your wife so that she cannot keep up with you. In such cases, you may be permitted to take a second wife or third wife. It is not some lofty intellectual or psychoanalytical question. Islam is not oppression, but mercy, peace, love, security. If your wife is able to fulfill your needs, then it is as if you are forbidden to take another wife. There. Now run off and say that the sheikh has given a fatwa. Next week, there will be another storm of controversy online as people discuss al karkaris latest scandal. All of that just to get 10,000 likes on your video. Here, I'll give you the 10,000 and first. Use your mind a little. None of what you say about me matters to me at all, as long as God is pleased with me. The point is that if you bring children up in a sinful environment, they will go on to sin, just as the child of Adam did. 
The husband and wife must both heed this. For both Adam and Eve ate from the tree. If both of them strive to ensure that they do not displease God, they will have no reason to fear for their children. Remember that the Prophet wasallam, said, quote, Every child is born with primordial disposition, and then its parents make it a Jew or a Christian. End of quote. You are the parent, the one who influences your child. And this influence does not begin when your child reaches seven years of age, but from the very moment of conception. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa salam.